Welcome to the Peterson Automobile Museum. We're about to take a little walk through the Bruce Meyer Family Gallery, which now is housing the James Hetfield collection of reclaimed rust. And James Hetfield, of course, is the um, front man for the heavy metal group Metallica, one of the most famous in the world. Um, he had two passions as a kid growing up in Downey, California. One was his music, the other was uh, automobiles. Being a hot rodder kid like all the rest of us, uh, he enjoyed fast, loud cars and fast, loud music. And the creativity that he had spills over not only from his music but to his car collection which by the way in 2019 he donated to the Peterson Museum um, as a gift to the museum which is on display right now and we're going to start to walk through some of the most beautiful custom cars ever made so let's take a walk first the first car I want to introduce you to is Black Pearl and Black Pearl was a collaboration and a creative style between James Hetfield, Rick Dorr, who was the custom builder, and a gentleman by the name of um, Marcel Doulet, and Marcel Doulet did the basic framework. This car originally was just going to be a quiet little 1948 Jaguar sedan, but as the design started to grow and as the creativity started to work, they made it the combination of Art Deco from the 20s and 30s and at the same time a hot rod of the 80s and the 90s. So what we have here, Black Pearl, is the creative, um, the pontoon fenders that you see here, okay, the, um, uh, the Art Deco trim on the car, chop top much like a hot rod or a lead sled of the day with a fast back and one of the most gorgeous cars in this collection being a 47 Jaguar, is carried through right into the interior. The larger steering wheel, the gold and cream color and the black, the uh, dashboard is done completely Art Deco of the day, of the era, okay? This has a, by the way, a Chevy engine, um, and it's automatic transmission. It just looks like it would be a shift automobile, but it is an automatic. So the underpinning is modern. The interior is done as a, as a two-seater bench style. Absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see, the uh, handles are shaved like a custom car of the day, but the interiors, of course, are done with the Art Deco theme from whence the car has come. Following through on the Art Deco theme, Aquarius, which is probably one of the prime, most gorgeous cars in the world today, um, was done by, again, Rick Dorr and Marcel Delay. Um, with the collaboration of James Hetfield. So just like his music, this entire project is a growing, living thought process. I like this, I don't want that. Here's the way it goes together. The interesting thing about this car, it's very much uh, styled after a 1937-1938 uh, Delahaye. You'll notice the pontoon style Art Deco fenders. This car is on hydraulics so it sits low. It also can be raised 
to run. The hard top on this car is removable. Again, it's got modern day running gear, but it's absolutely a gorgeous car. I had a discussion with Rick Dore, who was uh, part of the team that built this car, and his custom uh, company built it, and as you can see, it's gorgeous. The interesting, unique thing about this car, the interior, again, follows through, so that's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, follows through to that Art Deco theme. The museum also has, and if you choose to come to the museum, in the vault, what you'll find is a 1937-38 Delahaye that this car was modeled after. And uh, that is the original car that we have in the vault. This one, of course, in its own right, is absolutely gorgeous. Every angle, it's an entire entertainment theme as you walk around this car. It's absolutely breathtaking. Moving on, my personal favorite in this whole thing, you know what, this is like a convention of Playboy bunnies and saying I'll take the ugly one. Every one of these cars are absolutely gorgeous. Moving along to Slow Burn. Now, Slow Burn happens to be a custom version of a 1936 Auburn Speedster. This is not an original Speedster redone. It happens to be the body of a Speedster that you can get available. But, again, you're looking at American iron, you're looking at modern day running gear. The color, of course, is gorgeous. My personal favorite, because I am an Auburn Speedster person, happens to be Slow Burn. Removable hardtop, hydraulics, absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous car. The interior, of course, follows that same unique theme, except it's got some modern gauges, but it still has that Auburn cowling and the Auburn look. Uh, this Auburns came out of the family of Auburn, Duesenberg, and Cord. Um, the boat tail is absolutely spectacular. The entire car is absolutely a showstopper. And all of these cars have won awards at America's Most Beautiful Roadster Show, held every year in Pomona. The reason that the boat tail became such a popular theme was the fact when these cars were raced, it didn't allow the car behind it for the, to use the drafting techniques that they had. But again, you take a look at the pontoon fenders, the fender skirts, it is beautiful. It is gorgeous. 36 Auburn Speedster, again a Rick Dore creation with James Hetfield. Moving right along, Straight Edge. What we have here is another Hetfield creation with, again, a pretty famous custom car builder. This wasn't Rick Dorr, but it was another company. But this was a 1956 Ford F-150 truck. The lighting configuration on the front is very much 57, 1957 with the quad lights on this V shape. So it's a um, truck that originally was every bit of a tow truck. It hauled a boat around. James Hetfield decided he wanted to customize it and make it into a show truck. So they took elements from things from the 50s and started to apply it to this truck. The tail section that you're looking at here is very much out of a 1957 Ford. Might have been a Thunderbird, but it's a 1957 Ford tail section. The front quad lights, as I said, also 
57 Ford. The interior is pretty close to stock, just completely refurbished and redone with um, rolled and pleated interior, the pinstriping. The car is an exceptional beauty, this truck. Absolutely exceptional beauty based on, as I said, a 1956 Ford F-150. What we have here is the Iron Fist. And again, we're looking at the creative nature of James Hetfield. And what this is, is the beauty of this car, 1936 Ford Coupe, not painted, down to the bare metal, and sprayed clear. So it is the, a basic hot rod with a souped up motor. And the motor in this car happens to be a um, 350 Chevy V8. So it's fast, the top is chopped, uh, the chrome fittings on it, it's nosed, it's decked with a chopped top. All of the custom car elements that you would have had in its original form if it was done in the 50s. It's a way more modern car than that. And we also have as part of this display the uh, 2011 Bad Seed electric guitar that was used by uh, James in some of his concerts. And again, this is called the Iron Fist because it's raw iron. The Crimson Ghost, again, 1937 Ford Coupe. Out of the 30s, this was the kind of a car that you would have seen in a Jimmy Cagney movie, Public Enemy, any of the kinds of cars from that era, except this one, of course, again, nosed, decked, absolutely gorgeous paint job. The car is lowered. It's the top is chopped, so again, it's chopped, channeled, nosed. The uh, door handles are taken off the car, absolutely. This again is another Rick Door creation. Uh, Rick comes up with some of the most outrageous car styles and designs. And um, James and Rick get together on many projects because they both think um, alike when it comes to what is a beautiful, beautiful automobile. And this particular one has also won many, many awards at many of the car shows around California and around the United States. Again, another Rick Dahl creation with James Hetfield. So they kind of work closely um, James creates the music uh, and car design, and it's a collaboration of geniuses. The n the interior was redone on this car, also uh, as a two-seater, but a bench-style seat, and the dashboard configuration. The venting with the windshield that opens up was very much out of the day, 1937. Um, the running gear, of course, up to date. So not only is it 
um, a beautiful car, it's also fast. The unique thing about James Hetfield now is the fact that um, he has a couple of children that are in school and to incentivize this, his uh, children's friends, what he offered several times is if certain goals were achieved by somebody in the class, they got a month worth of rides to school in any one of uh, James Hetfield's cars, any one of his custom hot rods that they chose. So that was a prize that everybody wanted to be able to ride in any of these cars, which I think is something we all would want. Voodoo priest. Voodoo priest. First of all, the first thing that has to strike you on this is a voodoo priest, by the way, is a Lincoln Zephyr, customized by Rick Dorr yet again. Okay, and it's a 1937 Lincoln Zephyr. And what these cars, even in their original configuration, were known for was this long, sloping, sweeping back trunk. So again, it's uh, the handles are taken off. The interior is pretty much the way the original car was, just brought up to today's standards. And um, it's a 1937 Lincoln. Uh, the engine on this is the original V12, okay, two banks of six from a Lincoln Zephyr and it was uh, 267 cubic inches. So this car in its original configuration still has plenty of get up and go. Um, I think that you'll find that uh, uh, like all of Rick Dorr's creations, every one of these things is breathtaking. And this Zephyr is no different. So this is Voodoo Priest, one of the major cars out of that creative team. The color combination, or the color with the chrome, again, it's on hydraulics, it's beautiful. Black Jack. This car, a 1932 Ford Roadster. Now, when um, Ford, in 32, created the V8 Ford flathead motor, that became the bed and the basis for the beginning of what is today's hot rod movement. The way this car was created, and um, James, as well as the team that did this, which was uh, Josh Mills Customs, um, it was built with all of the original parts that would have been available, that would have been used in 1932 or in, all the way up through the 40s to make a hot rod. So they went back and did a complete classic hot rod build using only parts that were available back in those days. The dashboard, again, is all up to modern standards, but its original configuration. So this was a, absolutely a throwback to the original hot rods of a 1932 Ford Roadster. Absolutely gorgeous between um, parts were available between 1932 to 1949. This is an original, original car. So this is Blackjack. And that's what makes this car totally unique. Even the uh, drum brakes as opposed to disc brakes and everything else, it's completely original.
skyscraper. Okay, let's take a look here. We have again another James Hetfield guitar, a 2007 um, guitar and amp uh, that have been um, used by James at various shows, uh, part of the collection, and painted to match skyscraper. This happens to be a 1953 Buick Skylark with an absolutely outrageous, outrageous paint job. Totally gorgeous car, a pearlized purple, if you will. And um, again, the dip in the bodywork and the sculpture are uh, very much Art Deco looking absolutely a pretty car and again this is another Rick Daw creation with the collaboration with James Hetfield. Um, the engine in this is not a Buick engine it's a Chevy 350 V8 so the car has plenty of get up and go. I'm not sure but I think this top can be removed, but I'm not sure. The unique thing about the skyscraper being a Skylark, Rick's daughter named this car the skyscraper just because she liked the color configuration, the body panels, and the way that Rick Daw created this car uh, with her father, with James Hetfield. So that's skyscraper. The interior is the interior is very much stock Buick, but made absolutely beautiful. The bucket seats are something that were added. Automatic transmission. The car, again, is absolutely gorgeous. And um, last, but by no means least, is this Lincoln that we're looking at here with the suicide doors and this is called the Dead Kennedy and the reason for that there was a rock group at one time this is a 63 Lincoln Continental very similar to the car unfortunately and tragically that President Kennedy was riding in when he was assassinated but the unique thing about this car was this was a hobby car and this was a project car that James Hetfield actually worked on himself. He turned the wrenches on it, he was in the garage playing with this thing, and uh, according to legend and rumor, he did the custom work on this car. So it's absolutely, um, one, it's gorgeous. Two, it's a unique custom in the fact that the doors have been uh, shaved and the, uh, what's left of the Lincoln hood ornament was maintained. Um, and this is something kind of unique in the fact that it's so close to what was a stock car, but this was the statement that he made. The off-road pipes um, also open up if you want the car to make a lot more noise. And it has the original Lincoln motor, which is 430 cubic inches. Um, one of the finest examples, the grill was reworked by um, the custom car people for Rick, quad lights, but it was his uh, commemoration, tragically, of the Kennedy assassination. Absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous streamlined piece of work with what they called suicide doors. And this style of Lincoln in the 60s was very popular. Absolutely a giant of a car. Well, there you have it. This is the uh, James Hetfield collection. Um, in its entirety, he's donated these 10 cars to the Peterson Museum. Now, why he donated these cars is because he's had this collection put together for several years, and he enjoyed it completely, but he wanted more people 
to see his cause, to see the beauty of this rolling sculpture, this Art Deco sculpture that we see. So he donated these cars to the museum with the idea that now more people can enjoy the Art Deco beauty of what James, Rick Dorr, and several other people have created and brought to the forefront so everybody could enjoy what they see. Towards the end of this year, these cars will be moving on. Uh, we're going to put them on display uh, around the world. They're, go they're scheduled to uh, be shipped out to various museums on loan. The museum owns these cars and they will be back here. So you want to come down here and get to see these things in person because this is every bit of rolling sculpture. So there you have it, and this is the um, reclaimed rust collection from James Hetfield. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a great day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to click subscribe, comment, and like for more videos like this one.